I'm Sam LoCicero, and I will be analyzing symbols from The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. Background information. Katniss's sister was killed in the previous scene. She doesn't know for sure who killed her. As she's mourning her sister's death, she enters President Snow's garden. Let her in. On my authority. She has a right to anything behind that door. That's a nice one. The colors are lovely, of course. But nothing says perfection like white. I was hoping you'd find your way here. There are so many things we should discuss. But I have a feeling your visit will be brief, so... The scene starts off right outside President Snow's rose garden, and we can see the ground outside. There's snow on it, and winter symbolizes death, so it's only fitting that there'd be snow on the ground. And another reason that snow's there is because snow's there. The first sound that can be heard right as Katniss walks into the garden is the sound of running water. In nature, wherever there's life, there has to be running water, and the water in this scene symbolizes that there's a living creature in there with Katniss. That creature obviously being President Snow. As Snow said in this scene, The colors are lovely, of course. But nothing says perfection like white. The white rose symbolizes perfection. That white rose is also associated with President Snow throughout the entire series, and Snow's hair is white, so it only makes sense that Snow supposedly equals perfection. Well, think of it this way. Snow used the Hunger Games as the price for everybody's freedom in the country in order to keep the country perfect. Well, at least, perfect in his eyes. <coughs> I wanted to tell you how very sorry I am about your sister. So wasteful. So unnecessary. Anyone could see the game was over by that point. In fact, I was just about to issue an official surrender when they released those parachutes. You released those parachutes? You really think I gave the order? We both know I'm not above killing children. But I'm not wasteful. I take life for specific reasons. And there was no reason for me to destroy a pen full of capital children. None at all. <coughs> I must concede it was a masterful move on Coyne's part. The idea that I was bombing our own helpless children to hold back the rebels, it turned the last of my guards against me. There was no resistance left inside the capital or the mansion. As Snow and I said earlier, the White Rose represents perfection and Snow also represents perfection. His perfection, though, is tainted by the blood that he coughs up onto that napkin. That one single blood stain represents the 76 years that he's been doing the Hunger Games in Pan Am. Because, as I mentioned earlier, he thinks what he's doing is perfect, but it's actually tainted. Just like the blood stain taints the white, in which we symbolize snow being perfect. Now let's look at the blood stain itself. It could be just like a ketchup stain that some highly paid makeup artist just put on a napkin and gave to snow. But if you look closer, that looks like the Mockingjay logo. Coincidence? Probably. But for the sake of this assignment, it's not a coincidence. The Mockingjay has always symbolized rebelling against the unjust force that's in charge of Pan Am. In this scene, Snow is basically telling Katniss all of the reasons that she can't trust Coin. Wouldn't that mean that he's kind of like on her side giving information to help with the rebellion? Again, coincidence? Probably. But not for this assignment. I'm sure she wasn't gunning for your sister, but these things happen in war. My failure was in being so slow to grasp Cohen's plan. She let the capital and the districts destroy one another, and she stepped in to 
to take power of a 13th arsenal. Don't make no mistake. She intends to take my place now. But I've been watching you. And you watching me. I'm afraid we've both been played for fools. I don't believe you. Oh, my dear Miss Everdeen. I thought we'd agreed never to lie to each other. In this entire scene, the whole three minutes, Katniss has only said two sentences. She speaks in only short sentences because she's afraid and unsure of what she's saying. On the contrary, President Snow hasn't stopped talking for the past three minutes. He's been talking non-stop because he knows exactly what he's saying. He's really confident, like a professor talking to a class. Knows the material, knows what he's saying, and just talks. Now, both times Katniss says something, she's denying what Snow is saying. But when she denies what he's saying, she doesn't have the same confidence level that he does. She doesn't know for sure. Coin ends up being the main bad guy because she's the one that killed Prim, Katniss's sister, from what we heard by Snow a few minutes ago. But how can the movie just switch antagonists like that? Like one moment it's Snow and then the next moment it's Coin? Well, Snow falls down in the winter, which is the season in which things die, right? Wait. The season in which things die. Now, from 1 Timothy, we find out that money is the root of all evil. So, let's see what we got here. Snow is evil for a season, but Coin is all evil. Evil enough that when Snow's reign is over, Coin's still there. Those are all the symbols that I got from these three minutes of this scene, so... Bye, Miss Torres.